The UFC rankings are out, and we are on the road to UFC 203. This is not Forrest Griffin. I'm Matt Perino. This is prime time. I've always wanted to say prime time. Did you watch that show growing up? Football? No, I actually I didn't. Come on, you're, uh, you're killing me here. But I kind of got the name from him ish, so I'm the prime time of MMA. Mm -hmm. We'll go with that. Uriah Hall stepping in for Forrest Griffin. This is the rankings report. I'm getting paid, right? No. UFC Fight Pass was the spot this past weekend. Josh Barnett took out Andre Arlovsky and he's on the move. He moves up two spots to number seven in the rankings, one behind Travis Brown who's in action this weekend. We'll get to him later. But Uriah, I mean, Josh Barnett, a guy that says he's still possibly a 38 years old looking for a run at the title. How do you see him stacking up in this heavyweight division, which at the top is very heavy? Josh has been around for a long time. He's a veteran in the sport. The guy's tough as nails. I mean, for a guy like me that's chasing the dream too, it's hard for me to say, hey man, it's that time for you to stop. As an athlete, it's hard to hang up those gloves. So props to the guy for going out there. But critics are going to be in the way to say you can't do it, so it's up to him. Barnett, obviously, on the outside of the top five, and the top five is a bunch of killers. But here's the thing about the heavyweight division, what makes it really interesting. Nobody seems to be able to hang on to that title. There's been four guys in UFC history that have defended the strap two times. Let's talk about that. I mean, is there anybody with that kind of staying power? Stipe Miocic defends against Alistair Overeem. Is this a guy that can kind of keep it a few times? Big fan of both guys in the heavyweight division. Everyone hits hard. I mean, I'm not a heavyweight, but I've sparred a couple of those guys and they hit dumb hard. I mean, you know, not everybody's chin is golden, but in the opportunity, you know, stuff could happen. But uh, I think Stipe could make a run for it. At the same time, I can't count out Overeem. I mean, he's changed his fight game and he's been, you know, on a storm. He's looking really good. It's actually a really fantastic matchup. I mean, we have Uriah Hall here. Let's take advantage of it. There's an interesting kind of situation in the rankings when two guys may be really close together, one guy ranked over the other one. <laughs> um, in the heavyweight division, we have Josh Barnett, one spot below Travis Brown. Travis Brown beat him, so that makes sense. Six, seven Barnett, but let's go to the middleweight division. Gegard Mousasi, ranked eight, number nine, Uriah Hall, but didn't you beat him? I didn't just beat him. I think I was the first person to stop him. I mean, that, 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 it's up there, you know? Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? I mean, as a fighter, as a guy that's, you know, competing and you see something like that, do you, do you feel like you should be ranked ahead of him? I have two versions of this. Before I fought Musasi and people were saying, oh, he's ranked number six, you're ranked number 30 or 20 something. I'm like, man, f that. It's just because a bunch of guys sit in the room and put a number on you. I can't take that. In my head, I'm number one. But when I saw the statistic, I'm like, wait a minute, I, I, I beat number six. I should be ahead of him. But you know what? Politics is politics. I play the game and I just got to do it again. This weekend, main event, it's can't miss. It's the heavyweights, we're gonna stay right there. Stipe Miocic is taking on Alistair Overeem. Overeem, one of the best to ever do it in this game. He's won four in a row, three of those have been knockouts. I mean, Stipe Miocic is a great puncher. So is Alistair Overeem and he brings the kicks. Stylistically, how does this one play out in your mind? You know, I think uh, for Stipe's fight game, the strongest thing I could look at him is his mindset. If you saw him in Brazil, he walked out there, the, the fans were, kind of booing. I remember seeing him before the fight. He was like, listen, this is my anti-jujitsu right here. And he went out there and he he proved them wrong. So that mindset plays a big factor going there. Alistair Overeem has been coming off some great wins. You know, his mindset is really good too. But what I like about him, he keeps good distance. He's patient. He picks his opponent apart. He's not rushing in. He's not doing anything crazy. So I think stylistically, both these guys just look perfect on paper. So it's just who's going to go in there and impose the will. For Overeem, that's been a big shift, a big change for him since he moved down to Albuquerque. He started training at Jackson Winkle John. What, what kind of differences can that make going into a new gym with a new mindset, kind of changing things up for a guy that's done it kind of one way for so long? I think it's a great uh, change, you know. You just got to have that mindset to always grow, and he looks like he's trying to grow and build. Obviously, some things probably wasn't working, so stepping outside your comfort zone as a fighter, as a professional athlete, as a mixed martial artist is always good because you're looking to gain and grow, and we've seen it on paper. He's doing fantastic with his four wins. Mm -hmm. Speaking of guys that you sparred with, talking about early in the show, Fabrizio Verdum in the co-main event takes on Travis Brown, a guy you're also familiar with. Put this matchup together for us. I mean, what do you see when these two big guys meet up? I mean, I think I'm just going to see big slugs of punches, man. Just swings and coming at you. I think someone's going to get knocked out. Moving right along, we're going to head to the welterweight division. One of the most anticipated UFC debuts, maybe in company history, CM Punk, former WWE superstar turned fighter. Uh, he's going to take on Mickey Gall this weekend in Cleveland. 
huge media frenzy over this guy. I mean, he's a popular guy, but you're a fighter. You've been a fighter for a long time. What do you make of this whole, you know, pro wrestler to fighter thing I going mean, on? growing up, you know, I was always into pro wrestling until I did. The day I figured out it was fake, yeah, I said it. You know, for a guy like that to step outside his comfort zone, he said to himself, you know what? I want to see what it's like to be in the real field. Props to him. I know a lot of guys looking at it like FCM Punk and F this and how is he getting his opportunity? Listen, man, the guy has a huge fan base. People want to see that. It's a great story. Punk went down to Milwaukee. He's training with Duke Rufus, Rufus Sport, Anthony Pettis, uh, Tyron Woodley. Is that enough to kind of get this guy ready in two years? Again, you can't knock it. You know, I've seen guys that started later in their lifetime. Props to the guy for going out there and taking a risk. As always, go to UFC.com for the complete rankings. So I can get paid because I've been doing this for too long for free. <laughs>